The M24 light tank, known as the Chappie, differs from the previous American AFVs in several aspects. It weighs 17 and a half tons. It is powered with two V8 Cadillac engines. Each engine is fitted with independent cooling system, ignition, carburetor, fluid coupling, and hydromatic gearbox. New features are torsion bar suspension, 75 millimeter gun as the main armament, steel tracks, and new type of all-round vision cupola. Capable of 35 miles per hour, this new tank has a low silhouette, well-sloped armor, and a roomy turret. To familiarize the crews with all the new features of this tank, short courses in gunnery and driving and maintenance were conducted prior to commencing the trials. The training was, however, efficiently dealt with by the instructors, notwithstanding the difficulties under which they had to work. Training over and vehicles in first-class mechanical condition, let us watch how the M24 performed during the various tests. Here we see the tracks and suspension being examined before commencing a few hours through the jungle. This swamp was easy work for the vehicles. Pushing its way through heavy undergrowth, leaving a beaten path behind, we can see that such a task presents a problem for the crew because of the limited visibility. Scrub bashing, that's all it is. What's this, some new monster? No, just the M24 emerging from the jungle covered completely with vines and vegetation. However, the tracks and suspension are comparatively free from debris, certainly unable to fight under these conditions. Watch how the vines prevent the turret from being traversed more than a few degrees either way. Tough to remove, too. The crew are certainly glad to dismount after this period of blind tanking. The steering mechanism was subjected to heavy loading throughout the trials. Here is a scene of the tank steering continually for four hours in low gear, during which time the crew remained closed down. Differential oil temperatures were taken, the highest recording being 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The crew reported no discomfitures whatever. In mud, the performance of the M24 is remarkably good. Just watch it plow through this quagmire. A jeep fitted with chains endeavors to get through the same area that comes to grief long before completing the course. For the mud trials, a track 200 yards long was used to compare the relative performance of the M24 and a Matilda. This is the end of the run. Look out, old man, you'll get bogged. And off we go to a flying start. Watch the chappie making easy work of the mud and slush. More like a ship at sea than a tank. Let us see what the other tank can do. Good work, Tilly. Notice how much deeper this vehicle sinks than the M24. Hello, here's trouble. Down we go, better try and reverse out. And still the M24 keeps going, completing circuit after circuit. Note the good flotation of the light tank. Ground pressure is only 10 pounds per square inch of track. to recover the Matilda, and having no Don 8 tractor around, it's a task for two M24s. The use of a snatch block is required to help the towing vehicles. One tank was used as an anchor, with the other pulling. 
Matilda recovered. Let's try the M24 through the area where the heavier tank failed. Good progress is made through the sea of mud until the M24 comes to grief as the tank sinks into the old tracks of the recovered vehicle. Grousers would have assisted the vehicle here and no doubt would have got through had they been fitted. Here it comes again, trying once more to get through this area, this time just making it. Negotiating fallen trees two foot six inches in diameter presented no difficulty for the M24. Now let's take it slowly. This obstacle should test out the climbing capabilities of this tank. It's a vertical climb three foot six inches high. Here she goes for the first attempt but just can't make it. Let's have another try. Again failing through loss of traction, undoubtedly the fitting of grasses to the tracks would have given the required grip. Another vertical climb, this time three foot high. Observe that the speed necessary to negotiate this obstacle does not give the driver any chance of controlling the descent. Speeding across this five foot trench, the tank takes it in its stride. Observe that in crossing the six-foot trench, how the forward edge of the trench breaks down when the weight of the vehicle is loaded on this edge. Tackling the seven-foot trench presents a difficult obstacle, as this proves to be the maximum width this vehicle can negotiate. She just makes it nothing to spare, though. Now let's see what happens when trying crossing a trench eight-foot six inches wide just wide enough to make a perfect tank trap for the M24 as the vehicle sinks down to the bottom. Better reverse out, and if we can. Here the tank failed through lack of torque. While on this angle, no leaks occurred in the fuel, oil or cooling systems. Engines were left to idle and functioned perfectly, and the turret could be rotated 360 degrees by hand or power. A reversal of form, Matilda towing an M24. Several natural creek crossings were the last of the obstacle tests. The first creek crossing necessitated the climbing of a five foot bank and proved quite easy to negotiate. This three foot vertical bank proved a difficult obstacle. Several attempts were made to break through this four foot vertical bank down, but each time the tank failed through lack of torque. Coming through the heavy secondary growth, the tank had to negotiate a steep sloping bank six foot high. It failed at the first attempt, but overcame this obstacle at the second try. For the testing of the main armament against bunkers similar to the small Japanese type, bunkers were built with 12 inch diameter logs. With just the slit showing, some idea can be obtained as to the makeup of these bunkers. Here it is camouflaged. One round of HE fitted with super quick fuse was fired from 50 yards, and here's the result. Bad luck for anybody inside, even after one round. Now for three more rounds. Observe the result, completely destroyed. Different type of ammunition was used against the second bunker, this time using HE fitted with 0.05 second delay fuse, the range being 100 yards. The action of delay fuse ammunition is such that it allows the projectile to penetrate a certain distance before detonation takes place. Two rounds were fired at the target, and although the bunker doesn't seem to have suffered very much, 
The result was quite enough to daze anybody inside. Two additional rounds completely demolished the bunker. For the hill climbing test, several courses were chosen, each having varying gradients. A slope of 17 degrees proved easy for the M24, the vehicle negotiating this in second gear. Here we see the tank starting on a climb of 140 yards, the gradient being 20 degrees in the first hundred. Now the vehicle is negotiating a turn just before commencing the steepest part of the hill, where the gradient reached a max of 30 degrees. The power unit had nothing to spare during the last portion. Low gear and low transfer ratios were used throughout this test. Observe the good controlled descent as the tank comes down. Here the engines are holding the weight of the tank successfully. For the long descent, the driver had to apply the steering brake several times. Loss of traction accounted for both failures on this grassy surface. Here, the gradient was 30 degrees. Contour chasing on slopes of 25 degrees proved easy for the M24. The vehicle steering was not affected in any way. Turret could be traversed at this angle. Observe the vehicle turning on the sidling, climbing the slope after a sharp turn. Here we see the crew, the commander explaining to his crew the task for the day. Tropical conditions call for strict adherence to maintenance schedules, if vehicles are to be kept in fighting trim. Every detail is checked, nothing being left to chance. Here are the two tanks being loaded on an ALC-40 for transportation to a typical landing beach. Other than taking normal precautions, the vehicles were not waterproof. Notice the roll of the vessel as she makes towards the selected beach. Better get ready, fellas, you'll soon be there. Here goes the first tank plunging into two feet of water. Observe that the second tank stops immediately after leaving the ramp. The ground vehicle had stalled during the transitory period of changing down from second to first gear. Just another job for the fitters. The beach here has a gradient of one in six towards the vertical sandbank three feet high. The vehicle failed to negotiate this bank through lack of torque. The tank was unable to gather enough speed during the short run available on this beach. Attempting to climb another sandbank, this one two foot six inches high, the tank apparently negotiates this obstacle fairly easily. However, the power unit had little to spare. But it's easy enough to descend this five feet bank. Sharp turning in sand often proves a hazard for tanks, as tracks are very often shed during such manoeuvres. The tracks, however, showed no signs of being shed during these severe tests. River crossings, heavy with rock outcrops, severely test out the suspension of any tank. And these boulders should try out this new type of torsion bar suspension, not forgetting the strain on the tracks. 
Some of these boulders are well over two feet in diameter. Observe the working of the tracks and suspension as the tank negotiates a heavy stretch. This obstacle is taken in its stride by the M24. In recovering this M24 from a bog, the towing vehicle was able to get a close pull from a fairly hard surface. During these recoveries, the towing vehicle was assisted by the bog tank on each occasion. This will test out the towing ability of the M24. Notice that the surface has been corduroyed for the towing vehicle. Did you say mud? Let's try something harder. Descending this steep bank, the tank attempts to cross an innocent looking creek. However, the mud and silt accumulation on the far bank had to be reckoned with. Bad luck. Better reverse out and try again. Looks as if we're worse off this time. Uh-oh, the tracks spin as we try to reverse. Better get a tow. However, the steep bank and the bad surface prevented the recovery vehicle from getting a close pull. So once again, the long steel rope and snatch block had to be used. The cable being attached to a tree through the snatch block to the towing vehicle. Take it away. Having been recovered, the M24 is turned around and an attempt is made to climb the steep bank. Loss of traction prevented success on each of the three attempts. Just another pull to help it over the top. Built as a reconnaissance tank, you have seen the M24 operating under conditions which generally call for the use of medium or even heavy tanks. Although its performance was excellent, such conditions require the use of the heavier type for operation in these areas. The torsion bar type of suspension proved beyond doubt during the trials to be the ideal type for light tanks, and its use for heavy tanks will be watched with interest. A feature of this suspension is the minimum number of working parts necessary for each unit. This greyhound of light tanks is ideal for reconnaissance, packing a lot more firepower than ever before used in a similar vehicle. These trials were conducted on behalf of the War Office and were the subject of reports recently compiled.